from Maple Grove High School, John Jacobson and Debbie Rasmussen with you on CCX for High School Gymnastics tonight. A Northwest Suburban Conference meet between the Elk River Elks and the Maple Grove Crimson. Hello and Happy New Year to you from Maple Grove and Debbie as we get into 2024 we look at the calendar we're only six weeks away from section meets coming up for both these teams. You know they start earlier in late October early November and then you have that Christmas break and you're like oh we're doing good and then all of a sudden you're right six weeks so we, it is crunch time for these both of these teams. You want to get your routines polished you want to get your new skills introduced and just an Exciting night for tonight. First meet back after the break. And we'll see some of that too. Some, some new routines, some new tricks introduced now as the teams have each had a handful of meets before Christmas and now getting into the, the 2024 part of their schedule, invitationals, uh, conference meets and, and such. And this is the conference duel here tonight. Elk River, really good. One of the favorites in Section 7. They'll top 140 almost certainly tonight. That's where they've been. Maple Grove right around that 120, 121 mark. Uh, a very young team, only one senior for the Crimson and new coaching staff for them. And uh, it's going to be a fun meet, though. I, I'm really excited to see uh, the younger gymnasts compete for Maple Grove and the talent that, that Elk River has this year with three girls coming back who are state uh, gymnast last year, state qualifiers. Well, and we have not seen Ma Maple Grove in a meet before, so it's kind of Elk fun River. to see, yeah. excuse me, Elk River. It's fun to see someone out of the normal, and being that they're one of the better teams right now, this is going to be a good meet for them. As for Maple Grove, it's a building year. They have got their young, um, their youngins, I hate to call them, but they're, they are a young team, and as a coach, even though you might not be in the scores that you want to, you really, really are excited because you're going to have these girls for, you know, three to five years, depending on how young they are, too. So that makes it really nice for a coach to plan for the future. Warm-ups underway. We're about ready for the start of our first rotation. We'll take a break, come back, and our first rotation. Elk River up on the bars. Elk River Maple Grove Gymnastics next on CCX. Jason, let's go see your room. Gymnast of the night on the bars right now, Madeline Tucker leading things off for the Elks. Madeline started off with a switch kip, and what made that so incredible is she actually missed her hand and did not fall. Here's beautiful giants from her, and a full twisting layout flyway. That's a big dismount for your first gymnast up. in her switch kip, which is kind of her mount area, her hand slipped, but she didn't fall off that bar. Do you know how much, that's like strength. You know, that's pretty, pretty impressive for that. And then these giants were beautiful, great body position, good toe point, and that layout flyaway with a full twist. Nice routine. Sydney Martin will be up next after we get the score from Madeline Tucker. You see in the background the junior varsity for Maple Grove competing on the vault. Judges sitting right next to each other, a brief conference before we get a score posted here. You know what's funny? We haven't seen that before, and it makes so much sense. You know, otherwise one has to get up and then they have to walk over. Why not right sit at, right next right, to each right. other? So kind of cool. Um, she probably had a deduction for the slip of the hand, but um, still just a great routine for her. 7.90 for Madeline Tucker. And here's Sydney Martin. Sydney starting out with a beautiful um, long hand kips the, going the wrong way. Then she does that bail over the low bar, which is a release. These giants are gorgeous. Going into 
a half twist kip, long hang kip again. You know, as I was watching her routine, I was like, okay, she's changing the direction of things. What are we never expecting that front flip dismount? That was beautiful, really nice routine. You'll see here, so she does a switch with her grip and now she's gonna kind of do like a cast and then boom, front flip, teeny tiniest to step on the landing, good routine. Allie Rexted will be the third of five competitors for Elk River coming up. The two routines that we have seen so far, I, can't, I mean, I'm excited. We watched a little bit during warm-ups, but I'm excited to see because their two first routines are some of other schools' last two right. routines. So this is going to be fun. And now Allie Rexted. Sydney Martin scored an 8.60. She does a switch kip for her mount, which shows change of direction. She got a little hung up on, this is called a kip cut catch. She's gonna do two in a row for a really nice connection. Going into her giant swings, beautiful form. And a layout flyaway dismount to a pretty solid landing. It's always, you know, you, you do your routine so many times and then she caught the back of that heel before she did the cut catch and that kind of slowed her momentum down, but she finishes up really strong and that is a lovely layout flyaway dismount. When we're watching bars, things we're looking for is connections, change of direction, fluidity. Every, everything has to flow one to the next to the next. And you can't do a whole routine facing one direction. you got to switch it up. Good scores, though, so far, Deb. Really good routines. Again, they'll be a small deduction because she, will, she they won't consider that a fluid connection and stuff. So I'm not, I, maybe just a tenth or two, um, but still nice routine. Haley Beck up next. And there's her kip switch kip, does a toe arm. And again, two kip cut catches, doesn't catch her foot, beautifully executed. Here comes her giant swings. Wow, and a very nice layout flyaway dismount. It was really, really good. Um, that is a routine that is just textbook perfect. Everything just flowed together. You'll see here's those giants. She has a little bit of low shoulders on that dismount, so it had, she took a, a little bit of a hop back, but that should score really well, because that was a very pretty routine. You can always tell when scores are gonna be good when it was fun to watch. You didn't have any cringy <laughs> moments. <laughs> you know, like no fly off the moments. bar. <laughs> We've seen that a lot too. But um, it was a good routine. Melissa Fleeman, the fifth and final competitor for the Elks. Eight point seven five score for Haley Beck. Allie Rexted at a seven point eight zero before her. Really lovely start to this routine and watching her in warm-ups. She's gonna do a giant and then she changes her grip to an inverted giant into a layout with a half twist. Amazing. That is a something you see on men's high bar all the time. When you, you change your grip, you do an inverted giant. You don't see that in high school gymnastics very often. Lots of times in college and, you know, in the higher up and stuff. But, oh, my gosh, there she changes direction, changes her grip, does a gorgeous layout um, front with a half twist. That was pretty. I get very excited when there's new things. Uh -huh. we, I like it. It was, yeah, that, kinda, that was a... You kind of see some of the same stuff, and that one caught me completely off guard. That was good. Lisa Fleeman, one of 
three competitors or three uh, athletes for the Elk River who were in the state meet last year. Allie Rexted, Madeline Tucker also in. Sydney Martin may have been, but tore her ACL in practice last year and missed the state meet, and uh, but could very well be back there this year. They're going right into their junior varsity. We're going to take a break in just a moment to give you the score for Alyssa Fleeman in just a moment here. And she scored in the nine. Really nicely done. Beautiful score. Finishes a 9.40 to finish out that rotation for Elk River. So our first rotation break will be back. Maple Grove's varsity up on the ball in a moment. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. John Jacobson, Debbie Rasmussen back at Maple Grove. There's the team score for Elk River, 34.65 on the bars. And Maple Grove will look at their varsity for the first time here on the vault. And then you see the rest of the uh, rotation for this evening. Adele Noble will be the first gymnast up for Maple Grove on vault. She'll be followed by Hanukkah Default, Lily Full, Ava Plath, and Danny Hahn. Danny Hahn, the only senior, no juniors at all in the program, and so the rest, sophomores and freshmen. You know, I'm I'm laughing because I forgot this is the school where sometimes the girls start out in the hallway if they need a little bit longer of a run. You can't tell, but the the running pad goes all the way back. <clears throat> now we'll get Adele Noble, Noble up first. Wow, that is a beautiful handspring vault. She had great body position, good form, and a really, really nice landing. When you do vaults that maybe aren't the most difficult, you just, as a coach, want them to be done um, as best they can. And I don't know if you can get much better than that. She had super straight arms, straight body position, no step on the landing. Second, just a second year gymnast. Came out last year and has really picked up this sport pretty quickly. Again, another really, really nice um, handspring ball. It's not too much to deduct on that. She has great form. I know it says here that second year she's new to gymnastics, but she's a beautiful dancer. And because of that, I'm excited to see her on other events too. Usually you can incorporate so much dance with difficulty when you come from the dance world. Her first vault scored a 7.725, her second one. 7.7, .7, so the first one will count now, Annika Dufault. Doing a half on, half off. Um, the first part of that vault was great. She had great body position, super good block off of the vaulting platform, and just a little short on that landing, so it caused her to kind of um, take a step backwards, you'll see. And all she needs to do is just, just wait a tiny second longer block a little harder. She'll stand that up, and it will be really nice. Coach Dukeson calls Annika a very consistent performer, consistent all around her. So that's what you want to have, right? Somebody you can count on for a solid score each night. 7.9 was her first vault score. Let's yep. see how this one scores. And, you know, she's... She sets, she can set the tone for a lot of things. Maybe doesn't have the most difficulty, but if she's consistent in the scores, you can count on those scores. And then that helps the coaches kind of build from there. This one too, just a little short. Um, so the couple steps will cost her a little bit, but otherwise great form on that. 7.675, Lily Fole up next for Maple Grove. Now, um, unlike the gal before Lily had too much power and she has such a strong block that she kind of over rotated that and took that big step forward. 
So she's going to try to just slow things down a little bit and go for that nice stuck landing. You'll see here she has so much power. Blocks, nice twist. Lily, another all-arounder, scored an 8.25 for ball one. Here's her second try. Very nice fall to Gunn. It's, it's, it's a half on, half off vault. Probably doesn't have the highest scores as maybe some things we'll, we'll see. Um, but she just performs it so well. Nice pointed toes, great half off. Smaller step this time. 8.05 for vault two, so vault one scores the best. And now Ava Plath. Again, a really nice, uh, the half on, half off of vault. Really, the only thing the girls really need to perfect more is the landings. Otherwise, the vaults are done very well. First vault, 8.275 for Ava. There, that was a nice landing. Didn't take a step. She, you could tell she was kind of grabbing that man with her toes to hang on. So, good job. And she scored an 8.4. High score so far. From Maple Grove, and now senior Danny Hahn. Very nice. What I love about this vault is her half on is completely a half on to the platform. Um, some of the girls maybe do a quarter. You know, you, you want to make sure that you get this half on if you watch here. She almost makes both hands. Um, at the same angle versus, you know, to the side there, almost all the way around on that ball, so she should score well, and a good landing. First scored an 8.5, here's ball two. Very nice ball. I love that quick salute. She was hanging on, I got my stuck landing, I'm kind of feeling like it may move a little bit. I'm gonna turn and salute the judges. So this was really pretty. Love the toe point, she lands, and Quick salute, nothing wrong with that. That was good. And scores an 8.60. We're moving, right? we motor right through <laughs> that rotation. Boom, yes. We'll take another time out, back with more. Elk River will be up on the vault, more gymnastics from Maple Grove High School after this. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. What? I can't drive. What? Why? My. Oh. <laughs> With Debbie Rasmussen, I'm John Jacobson. Welcome back to our coverage. Northwest Suburban Conference Gymnastics. A look at the individual vault scores for Maple Grove. Top four scores out of the five are what counts toward the team scores. So Monica Default, uh, the first of the four that you saw there, whose scores will count towards the 33.15 score that Maple Grove had for the vault. And now Elk Rivers team up on the vault. As you look at uh, Elk Rivers, second year head coach, it's Anna Jopi. She's a 2018 Anoka High School graduate, was a state meet uh, qualifier in the balance beam, really outstanding gymnast, and now second year head coach with the Elks. We are underway on the vault. Peyton Tucker, the first gymnast up for the Elks. I'm sorry, but she's about the cutest thing I think I've ever seen, and she can vault. That was a beautiful half on, half off. Watch this twist, it's just crisp and super snappy. Boom, there she goes. 
and just a tiny step on that landing. This is a, I mean, she's a, you know, this is a, this is a tough thing for her because that vaulting platform is kind of high and stuff, and she just does a great job. A little bit lower on the landing on the second fall, but nicely done. Her first vault scored an 8.6. We'll see how Peyton's second vault gets scored. Sydney Martin will be up next for the Elks. You see here, she just was a little kind of loose in that landing, and so she had the uh, um, shoulders were a little forward, took that little step, so probably won't score as high as the first vault, but Eight. what a vaulter. Uh, 8.2 on vault two. And now Sydney Martin. Wow, Sydney doing a Sukahari, which is a half twist on and a back flip off. That was really nice. You can tell that they're very excited about hit, hit this vault. Here you see she pushes super hard, does a nice back flip, hangs on to that landing. I couldn't tell if the coach, um, if the coach did spot her, it's a five tenth deduction. If she didn't, you know, they're there for their safety and stuff too. 8.625 is her first ball. She just needs a little bit stronger of a block. Let's see if she can do it on the second one. Oh gosh, a little bit lower. Unfortunately, that first ball is going to be the good score. Well, we're talking about coaches there on your left. That's Haley Illy. She competed at Park Center not that many years ago. In 2018 and now is her first year of, of coaching. Competed at uh, Winona State until injuries forced her to quit the, the sport, but she was an outstanding uh, gymnast at Park Center for wow. Coach Bruce Smith, from, what, five, six years ago. You know, I think that's the one thing that we are finding. It is so kind of fun to watch these gymnasts that we've seen, because we've been doing this for a few years, you know, like 30, but to see these girls come back and coach too. Haley Beck, her first vault. 8.45 was the second vaulting score for Sydney Martin. So each of the first two gymnasts, their first vault was their best. Mm -hmm. She does a Yurchenka, which is a round off back handspring type of vault. She does it into a full twist and she's able to hang on to the landing in beautiful form on all of it. Just needs to have a little bit stronger of a block to make that twist quicker, snappier with a good landing. But this is hard. You are doing a round off onto the springboard, back handspring onto the platform. And then a full twist off. That was lovely. There she goes. She's like, yeah, got this. That was really good. Should score better than her first ball, which was an 8.3. I think the thing amazes me too, every gym we go to, the vaulting platform is located so close to the wall. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> First, I wasn't the best vaulter, kind of a turtle vaulter, it wasn't very fast. 8.75 for Haley Beck, now Madeline Tucker. Really nice, now that it was a beautiful block to a gorgeous full twist off that, and she gets great distance on the back side of that vault, so she, should get a really nice score. There's her run up back hands being super formed. Toes are pointed. And you want to have distance. You don't want to come back down as close to the platform. You want to be able to, you know, block and land further back. Her first vault an 8.975. Again, just another. It's clean. It works. It's beautiful. Um, just needs to work on a stuck landing. You see here what makes this so lovely too is just the form. She has no separation in the legs. They're locked together, beautiful pointed toes, and a nice landing. 8.925 for vault two. Fifth and final gymnast, Allie Ruckstead. She does a handspring full, which is a tough vault. It is a blind landing, and she did it really nicely. You'll see here, great body position, super quick twist. 
just a small step on the landing. She lands that almost standing straight up, and that is going to get her a really good score. <laughs> One more ball for her, 8.675 on her first ball. Again, just another vault. It's clean, it works. Um, clean up the landing a little bit, and she should be um, scoring in the low nines, in my opinion. That was lovely. Five solid routines for Elk River. 8.7 on vault two for Ali Rechstad. Another break in rotation. We'll come back. Maple Grove up on the uneven bars when we continue with more coverage of Northwest Suburban Conference Gymnastics on CCX. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Here's our scores for Elk River. All in the uh, mid to upper eights. Deb for a team score of 35.05. So nobody in the nines, but really good. Uh, you know, the lowest to highest, pretty close. 8.625 to 8.9. Very consistent. And they have vaults that can get in the nines, so they really work on the landings. Maybe a couple of, you know, form breaks in some of the pre-flight things, but really, truly, it's just those little steps on the landings that can cost you, but really solid, talented vaulting team for sure. Maple Grove, new head coach this year, Grace Dukasin, who's competed here not that many years ago. She's a 2019 graduate, and we'll talk about the rest of her coaching staff in a minute as their first gymnast is Julia Schlungen. She's an eighth grader. Again, a very young team, the youngest varsity competitor. We'll also see Rory Tisdale, who's an eighth grader as well. I believe she's the young gal that sang the anthem at the beginning. It was phenomenal. It was so pretty. Um, beautiful routine for her. She kept everything moving. Legs are straight, toes are pointed. Again, maybe not the difficulty. She does a straddle, half twist, dis dismount. But what she did was to perfection. It was, you couldn't do those moves any better than she did them. There's a look at the rotation order. Ava Plath will be up next. And Annika Dufault, Lily Fall, and Danny Hahn. Four point eight score for Julie Schlungen. Here's Ava Plath. She does two kips into a squat on. Long hang kip right into another long hang kip. Back hip circle. Big cast. And a tough flyaway dismount. Again, um, didn't have the difficulty. Uh, might not get the biggest score, but what she did was wonderful. She had no form breaks. Toes were pointed. Legs were straight. She kept everything moving, and this dismount tuck, no step on the landing, lovely. It I is think I'm going to say lovely a lot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It is alumni night here at Maple Grove, and I bring that up because you notice all of four of the Maple Grove coaches are wearing their state warm-up. State me warm-up from just five years ago. Oh, my stars. <laughs> Score of 7.0 for Ava Plath. Here's Annika Dufault. The rest of the coaches for Maple Grove this year, Emma Ungard, Gabby Toole, and Mackenzie McClellan, all members of the 2019 state tournament team for Maple Grove. 
And Danica's uh, routine. Really nice routine. And like we, you had talked about earlier, the coach was saying she is just consistent, and that's exactly what that was. She did show us a change of direction with that switch kip, which is something that is a requirement. But here she has beautiful back hip circle right into a pike. Almost laid out flyaway dismount and just a small step on the landing. I'm trying to think back to 2019. <laughs> I'm sure we did their meets. <clears throat> Judges taking their time with some scores. Probably our longest one tonight. We were just cruising right, on. Moving yeah. Along pretty good. You know, you kind of have to think too. These girls, I'm not sure if they get to work out during winter break or not. Um, but it's only their second day back to school. It's been long. It's late. And it's past my bedtime. I'm pretty sure it's past yours. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> Am I older or you older? <laughs> well, I'm older, but <laughs> apparently you go to sleep earlier than, than uh -huh. me. I just wanted to point out that you were older <laughs> by like six months or something. Lily Fool up next. She has great form. I love when gyms have big casts and they're done so well. These are moves called rear uprises and she does two of them in a row right into a back hip circle long hang hip big cast i don't think her legs came apart or unpointed that entire routine that, that was, was very awesome solid. annika dufault score as we didn't mention 6.675 look more or one more time at lily full on the bars really nice routine The fact that the team is so young, too. They've got many years to introduce new skills, learn more things, um, understand what coaches are looking for, and grow as a community together. Seven point six two five for Lily Fool. So their best mark so far. Danny Hahn will try to top it here. Captain will go to August Standing University next year, Deb. Not for gymnastics, but for acrobatics and tumbling. We've seen that's certainly a, a natural transition. A lot of people compete in both. Wow. Beautiful rear uprises. Again, the, the form is just awesome. Into a really, really high, nice layout flyway with a very solid landing. You know, the acrobatics and the, the trampoline and the tumbling track, they become so popular. Um, and if you've ever watched them, they're really insane crazy. It's like if you take that vaulting runway and make it a trampoline, and they do like 12 different things before they're done. Look at that solid landing for her. I think because it's become a collegiate sport, it's in the Olympics again. Um, Tramp was gone for a long time, and it's making a comeback. Not only they have synchronized Tramp, which really? is really, yeah, which is crazy. I've not seen that. And then you should um, watch the YouTube Tramp Spotters <laughs> because you know they are so high and they're not pay they don't pay a lot of attention to you know where they're landing and these spotters are crazy they get in there with a the crash pad and take them with their bodies it's pretty interesting danny hana 7.775 to wrap up maple grove on the uneven bars another time out here our fifth rotation up next head to the floor exercise elk river up next
KCX Media, your source for great local programming, is available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. Our free app allows you to stream all three of our channels live. You also have access to a large on-demand library, including full sporting events and daily newscasts. To find us, go to the store, search CCX, and download our free app. Then sit back and enjoy all of your favorite local content. The CCX Media app, available on Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, and Roku. for Maple Grove on uh, the uneven bars, culminating with Danny Hans, 7.775, giving them a team score just under 30, 29.075, and there's our uh, rotation scores and our team scores down at the bottom. Elk River up by about seven points, and they're probably about 20 points better than Maple Grove, and right now up uh, with seven points. So we're Onto the floor exercise, Kendall Cole up first for the out. Kendall opened up with a one and a half twist, which was really nice. I love to hear the music, see the dance moves. That was a nice double full turn. Every floor team has to have a full turn. Double just gives you extra points. Front handspring layout, front flip. The entire Elk River team is doing a routine in the background. It was very choreographed. For twisting wolf jump. Getting ready for her final tumbling pass. Taking a few minutes to breathe in the corner, actually a few seconds. And a round off full twist. A little bit of attitude in that ending pose. I like it. Good job. Fun routine for the first row, our first uh, gymnast up on the floor for the Elks. And um, you know, she's opening up with a one and a half twist. That just shows you the depth that this team has here. She does, she does a round up, one and a half twist. Again, anytime you're landing forward, those are blind landings. She handled it great. Um, it's, it's a lot harder to do the floor routine. I know it's usually about a minute to a minute 30. You can't go over a minute 30, but you are constantly moving the entire time. So it takes um, some endurance to do this. Elk River competes in section seven. Their section meet comes up February 16th at Cambridge High Sandy High School. It's a tough section. They finished second in their invitational meet last month to a team they'll have to face in sections, Forest Lake, and that was with Anoka, or excuse me, with Elk River scoring 142.9, and they were still a couple wow. points short of Forest Lake, Cambridge. Right? Sandy's in that section. Anoka, who went to state out of 7AA last year, also in there. So Elk River was a really good team, but they might, might not get to state because of uh, it's hard when you the, have the competition they've got in it. Tough section. It's kind of like Hopkins and YZ that have to right. face each other and only one gets to go. And then Becker used to have a pretty good team, or are they A? They might be Class A. Yeah. Good opening score, 8.7 for your first gymnast for your on first floor. Gy nice start. That was Kendall Cole, and now Haley back. These floor routines, the two that we've seen, or one and a half we've seen so far, they're fun and they're choreographed really well. I'm curious if they do them or the coach helps them. It was a round off one and a half twist. She didn't even take a step on the landing, which on the floor is okay. It's not a deduction to take that step back. Switch leap into a switch half leap. Headed to the corner now for the second tumbling pass. Look at the coach grabbing her arm and the other coach's arm. Front handspring, full twist, beautiful. <laughs> 
Final tumbling pass, round off two back handsprings into a full twist. She had twisting elements in all three of her passes. This is a handstand double pirouette. She makes it look so easy, it is not. Cute, cute head spring. I like the finish. It was cute, and the smile. She, she smiled that entire routine. <clears throat> really, really nice job. Again, the music is great. There's so much energy. Here is that first tumbling pass. She does round off, one and a half twists. This one, look at the coaches in the corner. This is beautiful. Handspring, full twisting layout. Nice job. And then she ends with round of two back handsprings and a full twist. All three tumbling passes have twisting elements, which gives her more difficulty, and she should score. I'm going to say the nines could be her first nine. If it's not, I'm going to get up. <laughs> gonna get up. I'm going to go over there. <laughs> Somebody's going to pay. I hope these judges don't ever <laughs> listen because I do have strong opinions on this. I think girls should be rewarded. Oh, oh, that might have to get up I'm going to get up. I'm going to get marching. <laughs> oh. 8.75 for Haley Beck. Not Madeline Tucker. Deb does not agree. <clears throat> it's her first tumbling pass. Round up back handspring. Double twist. Nicely done. Switch leap into a full twisting switch leap. <laughs> Look at the facial expression. She's loving all of this. Again, handspring front layout with a full twist. Beautiful. Double turn. Back shoulder roll, showing some originality. A few seconds to catch her breath before that third and final tumbling pass. Round up two back handsprings, full twist. She tumbles about as high as she is tall. Double twisting handstand into a one and a half tuck jump. Nice combination there. Really, really awesome routine. Well, I've liked all three of them, right? They are having fun. so much fun yeah. out there. That's that's what you love to see on floor. It's put on a show, have a good time. Um, they're starting to really give more difficulty for the dance elements, but she was jam packed. Here's a double twist. Beautiful landing, beautiful landing on that. Heads to that second tumbling pass, handspring layout front, gorgeous. And then finally the last one, round up two back handsprings. Watch this, she's almost standing up perfectly straight when she lands that routine. Okay, this better be in the nines, right John? And it is, 9.25 for Madeline Tucker. Melissa Fleeman, fourth gymnast up for the outs. Punch front walk off, got walk out to a run up back handspring full twist. Beautiful full twisting switch leap, full twisting tuck jump. She's <laughs> in the corner dancing, having a good time. She gets ready for this final tumbling pass, or excuse me, second tumbling pass. Round that back handspring, one and a half twist. Lots of height on those tumbling passes.
Double turn. She does that in a beautiful releve position, arms over her head. Is she singing? <laughs> That's so right. cute. Round up that handspring full twist for her final tumbling pass. Switch sleep, full twisting split jump. And <laughs> putting on that crown at the end. What did they say? If the tiara fits, that was super fun to watch. Just keep getting better, one right? Mm hmm. Well, and they're all their facial expressions and their smiles. I mean, they are having fun out there. And as a judge, you really like to see that too. <laughs> the ooh in the corner. Beautiful one and a half twist there. Just a small step on the on the landing. When you when you land, you can take that step present backwards. But if you do take a step forward like that, there is acceptable. But the forward, she just over rotated. There'll be a tiny deduction for that. Now, Rexted will be the fifth competitor as they tally the score for Alyssa Fleeman. We have watched gymnastics change a lot over the many years that we've been doing this, but I think for the better, it's just made floor an entertaining event to watch. 9.325 for Alyssa Fleeman. And here's Allie Rexted. Again, just some snappy attitude here. Beautiful front to a layout front. Second tumbling pass. Round up full twist, great height. Her leaps. Nice switch straddle to full twisting wolf jump. <laughs> Believe it or not, these are choreographed to get to catch her breath because she's, you know, got one more tumbling pass, round off one and a half full twist. Double turn. <laughs> I wonder if they have a crown in their gym, you know, like, yes, because everyone's, yeah. I love that in a lot of the collegiate gymnastics, the Gators, the Florida Gators have the Gator Chop, the Utah ladies make a U, Oklahoma makes an O, so maybe this is their this is the thing, crown, yeah. the crown, you know? Crimson Crown. That was very nicely done. Just a tiny short on that landing, but she didn't fall, so she was able to hang on to that. She ends up with her last humming pass is a round off one and a half full twist. I think the floor is, in my opinion, I'm assuming maybe one of Elk River's strongest events. No, it certainly looks like it tonight. They'll get another score in the nines. Waiting for the second uh, score to be posted for Ali Rexted, one of them 9.05. Well, we'll come back. We'll give you that thing. score, and then we'll come back with rotation six as well. Maple Grove up on the balance beam. More gymnastics from Maple Grove High School in a moment.
good scores for Elk River on the floor exercise. Starting at an 8.7 on the four scores that will count. Haley Beck at 8.75, followed by 9.25, 9.325, and 9.075 for the Elks final three gymnasts for team score of 36.4. Now, Deb says there should have been four nines out of there, but no one's listening to me. Um, the great floor teams for those. Maple Grove now up on the balance beam. Ava Plath will be up first. Rory Tisdale, her, our first look at her on varsity tonight. Then Annika Dufault, Lily Full, and Danny Hahn. Start out from Ava Plath. Again, in watching them in warm-ups, might not have the difficulty, but they are they had a solid warm-up. They looked great. They stayed on. Doing a, oh gosh darn, I just said that and she did so well in warm-ups on that. That is a back shoulder roll, which is definitely more difficult than you, than it appears to be. Beautiful full turn. Again, a requirement on the balance beam. You'll notice every single routine will have that in it. Does a three-quarter tuck jump into a back flip off, and I'm sure she's disappointed in that back shoulder roll, but you know, everything else she did was was really nicely done. The balance beam is an event where you try to get as many of the requirements as you can. Here we'll see just a nice back flip, and she, she connected that with the twisting tuck jump, so she'll get um, connection points for that. You, you can't go over a minute 30 on the balance beam, but there's no set time of what you have to have. And so that was a very short, clean, other than that, that unfortunate fall, you know, just get, get on the beam, get the job done, and have a nice solid landing. You can't see, but that beam is so close to the spectators, too. It is pretty close. <laughs> yep. Getting nervous. Yep. First judge's actual conference. And, you know, when they were sitting next to each other, then it made this a little bit easier. But usually it's when there's a, a discrepancy in the scores that is greater than three-tenths. They have to try to um, get a little closer together in the scores. So... A short conference. Score 6.15. And now here's Rory Tisdale. He was just an eighth grader. Split jump, tuck jump for her. Ready for her full turn. Oh gosh, able to hang on to that. That's good. Really beautiful cartwheel series. She had great form and she kept them moving continuously without any wobbles at all. Very nice. Trying to hang on there to that twisting tuck jump. Does an aerial round off dismount. Nice job. He's been a consistent performer on the beam for Maple Grove this year. And, and the good beam routine is, there. is a tough event to be consistent right. on. <laughs> Here she does. It's called an aerial round off. It's a cartwheel round off with no hands into a really nice solid landing. The beam is tricky. It's four feet wide, It's or four inches wide, four feet off the ground. Um, and you can be standing next to it without even realizing it's, it's very difficult to keep yourself centered and squared so that you don't fall off. And that cartwheel series is beautiful. And I could do fault to be the third gymnast for the Crimson. And 
make sure everything's just right, right? You got a yep. little routine going yep. through. Yeah. Got to kick all the, you know. She's also trying to make sure that her feet aren't. Um, this is a suede beam, and sometimes if your feet are a little bit on the sweaty side, you can slip more easily. So that's why they put a lot of chalk on their on their feet too. Um, back in the olden olden days, when the beam was wood, we used to use rosin on the bottom of our socks to keep us from slipping off. Because you know, but now it's lovely suede padded. They have no idea. The struggle was real, then. The struggle was real. 6.675 for Rory Tisdale. And now Annika Dufault. Really nice split jump into a three-quarter twisting tuck jump. Full turn, just a slight balance check there. Boy, that's up. You don't see. Hang on. Yay, she saves it. She does a wonder front walk over into a round off. Really tough. Good connection in a split jump, twisting wolf jump. To a round off backflip dismount. The round off always throws me because you're trying to land on two feet when the beam is the width of one of your feet here and she goes immediately into a back flip. It looks like she was tumbling on the floor. Nice job. When the coach has talked about her being consistent, she has been consistent on three of the events that we have seen her in so far. going to score in the sevens. It's kind of showing you without the difficulty, but you do connect on some of those twisting jumps and leaps. You can get good scores with those. 7.425. Here's Lily Fall. Does a no-handed squat mount immediately into a wolf jump. Wow, talk about a strong, where did that come from? She does a switch split leap into a standing back tuck on the beam. That was good. Cartwheel series. As that cartwheel swings that foot through, goes right into the round off. There's her full twist. Or excuse me, full turn. We see this a lot because they can do that three-quarter twisting jump immediately into that back foot, which gives them a um, dance acro series, which is part of the requirements on there. But where did the back flip come from? There's the dismount. Nice job. I didn't see her warming up at all. That was just an unexpected really good. treat, and that was a good routine for her. Coaches like it. Lily likes it. Let's see if the judges liked it as well. Exactly. Well, if they didn't, you know, I'll say something. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of scary. <laughs> a very intimidating guy. <laughs> I think I've just gotten extremely comfortable all these years voicing my opinion. It'd be funny to go back to our first couple meets, you know, in the mid-90s. I don't even know if we still have those. 
Well, I would hope that you would in the archives sure. with cobwebs. We'll, judges will confer on Lily Foles' score before we get that posted. Trying to think of back when we first started this, I don't think the crowd was as exuberant as they are now. It was more of a quiet, I mean, in my day, you could hear a pin drop. You weren't allowed to clap or scream or shout. Well, and even in the, in the, the floor exercise, we really saw it tonight with Elk River. You didn't have all the teammates. You certainly didn't have them all doing the routine along with the gymnast. No. Nope. And then certainly not even as much much cheering during the routines as you see now. It's, it's great. I love it. You, you see that a lot in, in college gymnastics, and I think that's trickling down, as is the choreographing for the floor team. They're fun. Score of 8.05, I believe it was, for Lily Bull. And now Danny Hahn. It's a beautiful full turn. She does a straddle jump to a half twisting split jump. Nice job. Split jump into wolf jump. Good connection. I love that handstand. She kind of floats down to one leg. You do need to show a change of direction where you're not working the balance beam in the upright position. You come down lower on the balance beam. Beautiful shoulder roll there. Wow, that was great. Look at that smile. She does a cartwheel of roundup combination directly into that backflip dismount. That's tough. If you're off even the tiniest bit on that first cartwheel, it's hard to get yourself back to do the roundup. Nice, nice routine. Danny's in her sixth year on the varsity team for Maple Grove, which also means all four of her coaches were one time her teammates oh here at Maple Grove. <laughs> wow. I think that's a first. I, I, I mean, I'm certain it is from of the meets that we've covered over the years. And you figured that all out. No, it was in the notes from Coach Gray. Oh, <laughs> I was going to give you I may have figured it out, but I probably not. I was going to give you all kinds of kudos <laughs> as a Robbinsdale graduate. Yeah, <laughs> wow, yeah. that I was said, good. Yes, I did. That's amazing, though, really seriously. She is happy. Oh my goodness, look at that score. That's fabulous. Uh-oh. Are we having a conference? Don't take that away. Well, it looks like they might be able to be one score posted in the, in the nines. Should I get the crowd going? Leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> it was a beautiful routine. Again, maybe didn't have the tumbling difficulties, but everything was done well, clean, connected. It's like, come on, give it to me. Let's do it. Oh, it's going to be a major one. They're taking, they're pulling they're chairs out and sitting down. Is that the last gymnast for Maple Grove? Yeah. There, that's okay then. No one has to wait. You can see there, they kind of take scribbly shorthand notes. They're basically um, 
things have symbols and markings, and so you can actually write it while you're watching it and still keep your eye on that gymnast and stuff. So they're discussing connections, um, dance acro series, leaps, those kind of things. What did she have as far as requirements? If you don't have all the requirements, that's a stock deduction right off the bat. Eventually, when we get higher up, like especially in the college, most routines start at a 10-0, and then they take the deductions from there. In high school, it's a little bit more difficult because not very many gymnasts will start at that 10.0. There's a few. Like Cheney New, and I made a run. Cheney <laughs> New was outstanding. Still going. We're going to take time out. We'll come back. We'll give you the score for Danny Hahn. And then our rotation seven. Now, Quiver up on the beam in just a moment. If you're buzzed and doing this... To make yourself feel okay to drive. ZWX. Uh, You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular U. Our scores for Maple Grove. On the beam, a correction on Lily Full score. I believe it said 8.05. She was 7.95, and then Danny Hahn finishing up 8.95 was her score tonight. So a good point higher than any of her teammates. There's her scores through six rotations now. We're on to rotation seven. Elk River up on the balance beam, and they'll lead it off with Peyton St. Aubin. Our first look on varsity tonight for Peyton. Beautiful back shoulder roll there. It'll be fun to see if their beam routines are choreographed with the spunk that their floor routines are. Really nice switch. They've been, she does a ring jump, which she throws her head back. Um, which you're taking your eyes off that beam for just a nanosecond, but that gives her a lot of difficulty. That's a tough, tough jump to do. Peyton has competed JV in the other three apparatus tonight. Her own varsity. She's able to hang here. on to that. You can tell she's a beam worker. Um, that cartwheel, when she landed on the one foot and swung it all the way through without touching it at all, that's how that is to be performed. Beautiful jumps there, too. They're above hip level, which will increase the difficulty for this as well. Does a round up, full twisting tuck. Running into that dismount on a four inch beam is probably just as hard as doing the dismount and stuff. So here we have um, a really great start, super consistent. You'll see here, she runs, she does that little hop step into a round up, full twisting dismount. I've always wondered, because we didn't have that kind of dismounty things so that, you know, no one did. Again, in the ice ages and <laughs> stuff, <laughs> but. The dark ages the of gymnastics. The dark ages of gymnastics. The wood beam when we walked to high school six miles uphill in the snow. <laughs> that was a beautiful start for her. But you think you say that, but you think of the the, the women that you watch compete when you were younger at the Olympic mm -hmm. level, like the Olga Corbett, Olga Corbett, and Nadia Comaneci, and just the, the legendary name. Yep. That uh, really elevated the sport. Sydney Martin is up next, an 8.55. Great start on the beam for Elk River with that score. Now, Sydney Martin was. Jim, as I mentioned her earlier, tore her ACL last year and so missed out on the state meet, but before her injury had scored as high as 9.8.
on the beam. Wow. So she's really got some, some talent. Well, right there, she does a front walkover into a standing back flip. Beautiful. I love her hands. She's got great hand position on this. Again, does that double wolf kind of almost throw her head back. I believe she's going to do an aerial walkover. Right into a full twisting front flip. That is so difficult because you have to end that aerial walkover at precisely the mark on the beam to put your foot down to do the full twisting um, front flip off. Really, really nice. Yeah, that really difficult. Timing-wise. Right, the precision that it takes. I mean, landing it is your first <laughs> issue, making sure you get a good takeoff for the full twist. You should get a really nice, nice score for her. Just a couple of balance checks in there. Otherwise, good routine. Haley Birko back will be up next for the Elks. Well, that uh, routine for Sydney Martin should score well. I'm going to say nines again. All right. Not 9.15. Happy camper. And now Haley back. Starts out with kind of a shoulder press or almost a clavicle press mount there. Unique and challenging. Beautiful foot full turn. She did that whole thing in releve, which is tough to do, and it looked great. Two one-handed front walkovers on the second one. It was like she was doing it on the floor. She had a little balance check on the first, but the second one, solid. Oh, darn. Just shoulders are off just a little tiny bit on that twisting jump. To a nice back handspring full twist. It's tough to have that fall right before your dismount. But boy, did she pull that together into a beautiful dismount back handspring full twist. She'll have a five tenth deduction for the fall. But that was very well done. Rexton, Madeline Tucker still to come here for the Elks. And we'll see where Haley's score lands after the, the fall partway through that routine. As you mentioned, this is a really good Elk River team that could still fall short of the state meet up because their lack of talent, just uh, how good the rest of the teams are yep. this year in 7AA, and the top teams at least. And Judges are good control here on Haley Beck's score. Um, I, think, I think that is, and there's no way around that. I mean, that happens in a lot of sports, like um, in boys hockey, is it Minnetonka and Wyzetta? Are they in the same just? No, Wyzetta oh, is good. in the same section as Edina, though. Oh, okay. And well, that's not good. But Wyzetta's it's hard. Really good it's, this year. There's not a you know, a fair way to have the top teams without excluding, you know, teams from other sections. Do they ever talk about things like that? Do you know? Well, of? Coaches in, in not all the sports, but in, in, in some sports would like to go to a, a seeding process among the top teams, especially among the big schools. Yep. And, it, and it's always been rejected by the league. And so you're stuck with, sometimes that happens where teams will get excluded. Allie Ruckstead up next. Score of 7.875 for Haley Beck. Does it really interesting? She kind of did a one-arm cartwheel mount. Haven't seen that before. It was really unique. 
two wolf jumps, tiny balance check. Cartwheel wasn't quite able to hold on to that foot swing through. Not sure if she was going to do another cartwheel. She may try to repeat it because it is a connection that you do want to have. So she's going to try again. Swing the foot through. Excellent. Oh, into an, oh, darn it. That was so really awesome. Aerial cartwheel. Haven't seen one of those. So we haven't seen an aerial walk of an aerial cartwheel in a long time. And here Elk River has one of each. Straddle jump to a twisting straddle jump. Beautiful full turn. Nice, nice posture on that. And a full twisting layout dismount. She almost had that aerial. That was so cool. I can see now why she went to repeat it because not only does she get the connection, then she has that high superior for the aerial on top of it. Um, aerials are tough to land. There's that full twisting tuck jump, little step off to the side, really nice routine. That fall was unfortunate. Now a couple of falls in a row here for Elk River on the beam. And those are things that they are going to definitely try to work out prior to sections because we have said it for many years, when teams are this close, usually the team that comes out top on a beam score is the team that's going to win the meet. Looks like, I hope we're not gonna have another judges conference. So let me ask your opinion on this. So when, when you get teams that come from the sections, you always feel bad for the one team that, yeah, they won their section, but they're gonna get annihilated when they get to. Yeah, and that, I know, that, then that happens in, in some sports where yeah. you get a team, the section champion, and they get no, no shot once they get to the, the state tournament. I know. An 8.325 for Allie Rexted. So they're moving close to the nine without that, that fall. Yep. Madeline Tucker is the last varsity competitor of the night for Elk River. Beautiful cartwheel series. Swings that foot all the way through. Easily could have been in the nines because there was the deduction for the first miss and then repeated it. So yeah, that's a definite nine routine. I'll give the judges this one, so. Nice back handspring, very solid, no wobble there. Wow, good routine for her. It's always hard to follow that team and that had the fall. Um, just because you kind of get that excited, jittery thing. Please don't let it happen to me. And she came through with flying colors. It was a beautiful routine. Here's this cartwheel immediately into the tuck full twisting. Just the smallest of hops on that landing. Seems really happy with this. Good finish for Madeline Tucker and the Elk River team. That will, well, we'll see what they score tonight. They, Probably not their best showing on the yeah, beam. Right. But good to get it out of the way now. So these end of the year meets, they're a really good time for coaches to decide who's their top five. They get to see how they perform in front of a crowd, who can be the consistent, who you, you want to hit five for five routines. They only take um, the top four scores, but if you have the beauty of not that, you know, if you have five to pick from that are really consistent, really successful, you just have a little bit of breathing room in this um, sport too but you really want to be consistent on the balance beam. 8.85 is Madeline Tucker's score, and that completes rotation seven. 
Our next varsity event, the last of the night, Maple Grove up on the floor exercise. We continue with our meet from Maple Grove High School after this break. Jason, let's go see your room. The family's visit to the forest inspired a beautiful question. Mother, mother, am I a tree? You tell me to stand tall. You tell me to stay rooted. I think I am a tree. My child, my child, of course you are. But what kind of tree will you be? The kind to hug or the kind to climb? Doesn't matter what you choose, so long as you choose to be a tree that's kind. Make the forest part of your story at a park near you. Find one at discovertheforest.org. Scores for Elk River. Finishing up with an 8.85 for Madeline Tucker, the high score, and second high score, Sydney Martin with a 9.15. We are on to the floor exercise for Maple Grove. Our look tonight at Alika Sokol. Her own varsity event tonight. She is a sophomore. Having, having Coach, fun right off the bat here. That coach says, fun to watch on the floor. <laughs> nice opening tummy pass run up that handspring, full twist, or excuse me, tuck. Switch leap into full twisting jump series. Good job. Beautiful layout punch front into forward row cartwheel. And some fun dancing on the floor. Third and final tumbling pass, round up, two back handsprings, back shoulder roll. <laughs> really, I can see why she says that she's fun to watch, she's darling, and she has a smile on her face the whole time. Here's that first tumbling pass. Round up, back handspring, back flip. Second one, she does layout punch front. A little low, but that's okay. Goes right into the forward roll cartwheel. Third and final tumbling pass. Round up, two back handsprings. Nice job. Machine for Maple Grove. Four all-arounders in uh, all of the events, and then one individual is the fifth competitor, in this case for the four exercise, was Alika Sokol. Ava Plath will be up next. Score of 7.00 for Alika. Another sophomore, Ava Plath. She opened up with a little floor work that's actually taken from men's pommel horse. Round up back handspring, layout, half twist. You can tell she liked that. Full twisting wolf jump into full twisting tuck jump. Nice combination. Punch front, round it back, hand spring, too much energy, bounds right off the floor. 
there is a deduction for that. You do have to stay within the blue portion of the floor, but both feet went out, but she's still having a good time. Round up two back handspring walkout. <laughs> really cute ending on that routine. Sometimes these spring floors are tough because if you get really close to the edge, you can kind of bounce yourself right off the floor. So her first pass, look at that face, she did it. Round up back handspring, half twist. She'll go punch front, round up back handspring. You'll see she just too close to the line and ended up stepping out. Final tumbling pass, round up, two back handspring walkout, nice job. Anna Kadu Falk is next, 7.60 for Ava Plath. Nice full turn into one and a half twisting tuck jump. Really, really nice. Punch front, punch front. Beautiful switch leap, full twisting wolf jump. Gets ready for that second tumbling pass. Round up back handspring layout. Really nice job. Great body position on that. Little front walk over to a handstand with a little tick flick there on her feet. Good job. Showing a lot of originality in this routine, which is fun. Round up two back handsprings, back to great height. Really nice, nice routine. Good tumbling passes, great choreography. I love the jumps and leaps with the full turns and the full twisting in them. Good job. I mentioned what a young team this is for Maple Grove. They they have one senior this year. Next year, they'll have no seniors. They have no juniors on the team this year. So this is a group, with the exception of, of Danny Hahn, is going to be around for a few years and compete and presumably improve and build those scores up and routines and, and everything as a new coaching staff comes in. And, well, and they, you know, they have good bones to work with, yeah. so to speak. The girls are talented, they're consistent. It's just a matter of let's increase the difficulty and the skills because the dance difficulty is already there. And those are the only things that they're missing. And because they're so young, there's so much room for growth. 7.825 for Annika Dufault and now only four. Round up back handspring layout, half twist, good landing on that. Beautiful switch leap into full twisting split jump. Front handspring layout punch front. Showing us some personality moves here. Third and final tumbling pass. Round up two back hands brings into a nice back tuck. Great height on that. Full 
beautiful one and a half turn into a twisting tuck jump. Good combination. That's a cute routine. Yo, Danny, one of the Crimson All-Rounders with her last event of the night. <laughs> Tell her friends what I missed. Here's what I messed up on. <laughs> <laughs> with, with a smile. With a smile. <laughs> Could have done this better, but I'm smiling. Um, that was a beautiful opening timing pass with the half twist, but this one, the front handspring layout front, can't do it much better than that. And she just round up two back handsprings. Watch the height. She's, she's actually tumbling higher than she is tall. It's a good job. A uh, 7.75 7 for Lily Full. And our last competitor of the night, Maple Grove's Danny Hahn. This will be fun to watch. It's a little bit more in her specialty realm if she's doing the acrobatic part after this in college. You can tell she's going to be a strong tumbler. Wow, punch front into pike front. Awesome height on that. Showing us a little strength and attitude. Beautiful round off. Her punch front walk off into a round off half twist. Double turn. Switch leap into full twisting switch leap. Just some really unique floor work there as we get ready for the final tumbling path. Round up that handspring layout. That was a nice routine. She's a very strong tumbler and she does it with impeccable form which that's how you can tell her tumbling is definitely um, a specialty of hers because she does it so well. And you hit on it too, some really unique dance moves in the yes. middle of that routine between her passes. Yes. So here's that first, she does a punch front into a pike front, perfect landing, stands that straight up. Punch front walk out, round up back handspring, layout half twist, Solid, no steps needed. And lastly, round up two back handsprings into a really nice layout. Her landings are so great too. You're allowed to take that step back, but when you can nail a landing with no step, that's just even better. And she finishes with an 8.675. Maple Grove's top score on the floor exercise. Should be higher. We're gonna, <laughs> Deb says it should be higher. Of course it should. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll take our last time out. We'll come back. We'll tally the scores. Have our post game as we finish our coverage of Metal Corner Maple Grove Gymnastics on CCX after this. Final team score tonight, Elk River, 140.975 to Maple Grove, 125.175. That's a high score for Maple Grove for the season. And a breakdown 
by apparatus, by rotation, Deb. And we expected uh, Elk River to be in the 140s, and they were. Mm-hmm. Not their high score, but they're right in the ballpark of where they have been. And Maple Grove up uh, about three, four points from where they have been. And they expected to be a little bit better, adding some more difficulty into some routines, and it, and it reflects in the score and a good start for 2024 for them. You know, and as a coach, that's all you can ask for is that those scores increase each and every meet that you're on, which shows you the depth and the consistency that Maple Grove has. Might not have the difficulty, but they have five consistent routines and they can just build um, from the rotations that they have so far. I think they should be very proud of themselves, like you said. We knew that they weren't going to be close to the 140s like as, as Elk River. They're a young team. They're a growing team. And they just keep adding to the scores as they move on. And Elk River, great team. Just struggled a little bit on the balance beam tonight. They're going to want to clean that up before they get into, you know, section finals, especially since it might be that close. But I think Maple Grove did a great job tonight, especially first meet back after the break in front of your home crowd. It's kind of fun. Maple Grove will be back in competition on Saturday. They're part of the big MGGOA meet over at Park Center High School Saturday morning. Elk River will be at home for their next meet next Thursday. They will host Coon Rapids. Section meets for this team, Maple Grove and Section 5AA, February 15th at Buffalo High School and Elk River February 16th at Cambridge i Santee. Well, that will do it for our coverage tonight. Deb, good to work with you again. and oh, uh, fun. fun to see these uh, gymnasts back in action tonight. Elk River wins it tonight over Maple Grove. For Debbie Rasmussen and all of our crew, I'm John Jacobson. Thanks so much for cover, watching our coverage of Northwest Suburban Conference Gymnastics on CCX Sports.